And so um, on two days before we left the hospital, we were going into ICU to visit uh, Christian and the NIC unit. And there was a mother there who um, son was in ICU. The mother had, um, she had uh, a baby that was very, very sick. Um, and they really weren't sure if the baby was going to survive. And you know, my husband, my husband does not meet strangers. My husband went over to the family to talk to the family, ministered to the family, and um, wanted to know, you know, uh, of course you couldn't find out personal information about him because it's in a hospital, but he just went over and talked to the family. And then we um, left and went back to our room. And then he went down a little bit later to visit the fan, went down a little bit later to visit Christian again. And that time there was a waiting area and the family was in there. And the mother just, the, he's always had seen the grandmother whenever we went down, but that time the mother was down along with the grandmother and the grandmother and the mother was there and he said to them, he said, um, what's, you know, how are you doing? And the mother said that she really wanted uh, her, her child was um, to come home and she wanted her child to get out of ICU. And um, he said, well, um, you can pray and ask God for that. He said, but let me ask you a question first. He said, are you saved? And the mother said, no. And right then and there, they prayed with her for her salvation and she became saved. So mind you, the prophecy that was prophesied that he was, there were people would be saved through and by his life. And that was the first time that someone had gotten saved just because he happened to be in that place. God, you know, put him in that place, put us in that place to be in the emergency, be in the ICU room at the time that that mother was there. So of course we um, went home and we got a call and the lady on the, on the phone was uh, crying and my husband was trying to figure out what was going on but it, it wasn't her that was crying. It was the baby that was crying and the baby was able to go home. <laughs> and um, he was, she was saying, this is the baby and the baby is at, and we're at home and the baby's at home. So we just stopped, stopped praise God for, you know, allowing the baby to come home because they really didn't know it was touch and go, but the baby was allowed to come home and through that. And I just, I just thank God. And all of, there are many other stories that can be told through and about what Christian has gone through when he was six, five, five or six years old. Um, he attended a, a school. It was a private school. And he was um, on the playground after school. And I had come to pick him up from school. And when I came up, I always go to the park, the area where they play and I'll say my, you know, say his name and say, I'm here to pick him up. And that day, the lady, when I went to pick her up, she looked kind of funny. And she said, um, you, I, I need you to go with me inside. And I was like, okay, go inside. So we go inside. <clears throat> And while I'm going inside, I see my husband's car pull up and I'm like, what is he doing here? He doesn't pick Christian up. I always pick Christian up. So we go inside and Christian is in the um, health room of the school. He, what had happened was a little boy was on the playground and they were climbing the monkey bars and all those things like that. 
and the little boy that was climbing in front of him fell back and fell on his leg and he broke his femur. And he had to be, we had to, um, so they had him, them, him in the healthcare room and we had to, he had to go by um, ambulance to the um, hospital. And he had, as I said, a broken femur. Now the femur is the, you know, the largest bone that's on your um, leg. So he had broken that and they had to um, immediately have surgery to try to correct it. He had to end up in a body cast that was um, from his waist down, both legs. So for six weeks, we had to carry him around in a wagon. And so um, that was a time, the six weeks I took off of work and I spent you know, time with him. And at the end of the six weeks, so that was a time that, you know, I really, really um, spent a lot of time with God and a lot of time just um, trying to find what is the purpose, you know, for all, you know, you always want to know what the purpose for things happening, but it is all about you meeting people, um, talking to people, interacting with people, and letting them know that yes, we're going through this, but there is also something else that that has to occur, and that is we have to share God okay. with them and let them know how good God is, and that God can do anything. Yes, He's what five, six years old going through this, but He also has a testimony, and through that, God was doing something with Him. He's always been a. a a good boy. He's always been uh, very happy. I remember him before he had his accident with the legs, him running around. He All he did was just run, run, run all the time. And I always had to be outside. Uh, I was like, oh my God, if I don't want to go out today. But that's what he said, mm -hmm. mama, please, let's go outside. Go outside and just run around, run around, run around. So when they um, the six weeks was over, his, his dad was able to, I went back to work and his dad was able to be off with him to, to do the um, uh, therapy that he had to do. So he had to do mm -hmm. physical therapy. And that's when they became very, very close, very, very close. He had to, so we thought that he was going to be able to just um, get out of the cast and just start walking, but that didn't happen. He had to learn how to walk all over again. And so um, that was a time when we really, really uh, talked to him about, you know, the, yes, this may be happening to you, but God is still good and God is still faithful, right? So that was a time that we, as a family grew together. Um, with this situation that was going on with him. And through that, um, they had uh, said, you know, that maybe, you know, he won't be able to do a whole lot of things. Maybe he won't be able to walk correctly, you know, like, cause he may have a limp and all those things like that. But <clears throat> when he was in, I think it was middle school, he, he decided that he wanted to, um, start playing sports and um, he tried out for basketball and he didn't make the basketball team because they was you know he, he wasn't really good at dribbling and all that stuff like that <laughs> so then he decided that he was going to go out for track and he in, he said that he loved track um, and, and you remember I was telling you that when he was little all he did was just run 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 he loved track and he, it ended up that track was the thing that really um, was the thing that really, really gave him the, what I started off, when I started off talking about know who you are, it, he identified with track. Mm -hmm. And by him identifying with track, that made him um, 
he ended up being been doing very well in track and he ended up going to college and running in track as well so and the reason why I'm saying know who you are and what you represent is because God also gave him a different kind of platform when he got older and then that platform was okay yes you're running track but you're also representing me so he was representing God in what he was doing. Wow. And he had to really understand. So whenever he ran a meet, any kind of meet, he always said that, um, you know, people may, may say to him, oh man, you you run, you you really run. And he said, no, I give, I give God the glory. Amen. Amen. He gave God the glory. And the reason why he did that was because he knew of his story. He knew where he started with, you know, not being able to walk for the, for six weeks and then being able to go out and run and, um, make, um, become a champion in running. Um, so I, I just give God the glory for it. I I told you, I can't do his testimony justice because I don't know the things, all of the things that he had to go through, um, in his mind, the battles that he had to face in his mind. But I do know that when I look at him now and I look at that and think about that little boy that was five or six, he has grown into a God-fearing man. And he is a young man that loves God. And there, I, I, is that him? No, I'm saying. And he is a, man, a God-fearing um, young man. He loves God with all his heart. I remember when he, and I, I might go back and forth, but I remember when he was in AAU um, track and field. And, you know, with AAU, you're out all the time. You know, you got, um, you may be gone on a Friday, Saturday, you know, and Sunday, and you just, you're, you're, um, you, you, you'll just be gone for long periods of time. So one, I remember this, he was, it's, it's hot, you know, out there sitting, waiting for them to run track and everything. And it was on a Saturday and he had ran that Friday. He had done very well. And so if you won, you go the next day, you got to run again. So the next day was Saturday and he ran and he didn't run well. And his dad said, man, you, what, what you, what you, what are we, what were you doing? He said, you act like you stopped running. And he didn't say anything. And his dad said, did you stop running? He said, well, yeah, because tomorrow, tomorrow's Sunday and I want to go to church. He said, and if I win, I can't go to church because I got to stay here and run. And I don't, oh. he said, and I don't want to, um, I don't want to miss church. Oh, and that was he was during that time he was like 10 or 12 but church was all he knew because of course we brought him up in the church mm-hmm. um and he he loves he loved church he um and it was like he was there was something that he was missing if he couldn't be there wow and I just thank God for that because God put it in him early and I'm, I'm going to keep saying it over and over again. I really can't tell you all the things that he was thinking about in his mind. But I know the things that he, the, you know, the things that he said to us, like, Mama, no, nah, I, 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 if, if, if um, when we had COVID and we didn't go to church, that was kind of difficult, you know, for, uh, for <laughs> us and for him because he wanted to go to church. Of course, being older, he knew that, you know, there was reasons for not going. But when he was younger, it was like, no, I've got to go to church. We've got to go to church. And I just thank God. Church was um, his, he can be in his uh, room sometimes. I remember when he was in high school, being in his room a lot. And I was like, why is he staying in his room a lot? But in his room, what he was doing, he was in there praying and he reads, he reads, he has lots of books that he gets and he reads so that he can get um, as much, know as much as he can about God. 
So, um, cause I, I, you know, how you, I, you probably have seen this too, that witness that you will see these Amazon packages always coming to the house. And I'm like, oh Lord, another Amazon package. But when he op opens it, it's always a book that he's reading to <laughs> learn more about God. And so I just thank God for that because um, that was put in him and, and he's continually um, putting it out. And then he just ministers, um, like sometimes I hear um, him on the phone and he's ministering to young men that he has um, went to school with, like from high school, but he's ministering to them now. And I know it's one young man that he went off to the military and they have conversations and he's talking with that young man. And I just thank God just for him. and. He, um, whenever you, you know, if I, I, we're having a conversation, I know that he loves me um, and I know that he wants the best for everybody, you know, cause that's, that's the heart that he has. He's a, he, he gives. Um, and one, one day I said to him, I said, um, you know, um, I really wish you would um, go on ahead and um, find you somebody that will complete you. And he said, no, he said, I can't do that. I said, why? He said, because he said, I don't want the drama that comes with it. I don't <laughs> need it right now. He said, I've got I, he said, I need to focus on being the best be, best wow. awesome. me that I can awesome. be. And um, he said, so I've got to do that. I've got to be the best me that I can be. Um, and then when I was thinking about that, you know, know who you are and who you represent, I, he, he doesn't allow any more, be, like before, when he was probably in middle school, high school, um, he doesn't allow what other people say and what people do affect what he does. Wow, that's awesome. So he, he's kind of different. Like he doesn't have to do, he, he doesn't have to hang out and do what other people do. Um, uh, he, he is pretty much his own, own man and he um he's okay with being different um and I think that's important because he doesn't you know he doesn't have to have people to validate him so I think that's the important part that I like about him is that he is his own man he awesome. you know, doesn't matter about that um and I think that's 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 very very important I know that um I was looking at um, a couple of uh, scriptures when I was thinking about this um, and James 3 and 12 was important because what James 3 and, th 3 and 12 tells us is and you probably remember this because we talked about this before it's, it's um, talking about the power of your words and remember, we had that book study and we talked about the words were very, very important. Yeah. So the, you, you just can't say anything. And he's that type. He won't say anything. He, he's, not a, he's not a talker either. He won't say everything, even though he might, might think it, he, he won't say it. So I thank God for that because he understands the power of his words because, wow. you know, the power of life and death is in your tongue. And we have you know, said that, you know, you be careful about what you say, be careful about what you speak, those things. He also understands that whatever a man thinketh, so is he. So right. you got to think more of yourself um, than what others think, you know, you got to think of yourself and think highly of yourself and know who you are in God. But the only way that you can do that is is if you are trusting and believing in God. And I, I know that he trusts and he believes in God. Um, 
he is uh, much, much better than what he was when, of, you know, that's because of the journey that he had to take. I mean, that's like I said, I can't tell his journey because I don't really know it from his perspective. Right, right. From what I'm looking at, I know how much um, I've seen him grow um, from the time that that little boy broke, broke breaking his leg <clears throat> or his femur to the man that he has become today is it's, it's so, so important. There was a story that I had seen um, and saw uh, a while back and it was this story about a man who had children and the man said to his children, he said, I'm going to tell you the secret of life. And so the kids said, well, dad, when are you going to tell us the secret of life? He said, I'll tell you the secret of life when you get old enough. And they said, um, okay, well, when are we old enough? He said, well, when you're 12, I'll tell you the secret of life. So the oldest, the oldest boy became 12. And he said, dad, you had told us that when we become 12, that you was going to tell us the secret of life. So I'm 12. So you got to tell me the secret of life. And he said, okay, I'll tell you. He said, the cow does not give milk. And the little boy said, dad, what you talking about? The cow does not give milk. And he said, it's just what I said. The cow does not give milk. You have to milk it. He said, you have to get up in the morning at 4 a.m. You have to go to the field. You have to walk through the field. You have to walk to, through all the manure that they have and all that stuff like that. You have to sit on the stool. You got to put the bucket under the stool. You got to do the work itself. So the secret of life is that the cow doesn't give milk. You have to milk her or you don't get milk. So if you don't put something in, you don't get anything out. Wow. And I know that he puts time in with God. And that's the reason why he gets results from God. So whatever we put in, that's not just true for, you know, um, him, but it's true for all of us. Whatever we put in, that's what we're going to get out. If we don't put anything in, we can't. With the world that we have right now, um, it's like instant. You know, we got Instagram, we got, you know, everything, microwave, all this stuff like this. We got all this stuff that is automatic. They, they think that if they if they wish it or they ask it, they can get it. But it's, it's not that you've got to work for it. And in order to know who you are, you've got to work for it. That means you got to go in, in those, in the scriptures, you got to search those scriptures. You got to look for it. You got to find it in the scriptures because it does tell us who we are in the scriptures. Yes. We are the king's kid, Lord. We are our royal priesthood, right? It tells us that in the scriptures. So we got to go to those scriptures and search those mm -hmm. scriptures to find it. And um, we got to know that we represent him. So even, even when we go into scriptures and search the scriptures and find out who we are, then we have to represent that. So we can't fall short in not representing him. And anything that's going to um, not allow us to represent him, we, we've got to maybe um, figure out a way or go to him to find out what it is that we need to do in order to change that. So I think it's very, very important. Yes, it's good to have stuff. It's good to do all those things. But we got to know who we're representing. We're representing. We are representing God. Mm -hmm. And we got to know that if what I am doing is God going to be pleased with that. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what, when I, when I see the things that he does, he always, you know, wants to make sure that he's representing God and he's representing God well. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't, um, you know, I don't think that he, he has never, given me, a, um, you know, the, besides the little uh, stuff that teenagers go through, he doesn't give, he has never ever given us um, trouble. 
Um, he, he's always been a, a good boy. And one thing about him is if you, if, if I or his father say something to him, maybe he doesn't understand it. He will, we won't see him for a little while, but then he'll, he'll, he'll come back around and he'll say, um, well, you know, um, I didn't know what you meant by that. He said, but I'm sorry. And, you know, he apologized. So that I know that that's God dealing with him. So I just thank God for him having his own relationship with God and knowing that he represents God. So it's not him. Yeah, it's true. You know, you um, you say um, don't mess. You, you, you probably heard your, your daddy say this. Don't be messing up my name. Don't you know, <laughs> my reputation. But you, you it's something bigger than that. It's bigger than God, it. too. Right. That's right. So that's we don't right. want to mess up what 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 God represents. Exactly. Either. That's right. So, um, yeah, I think it's very very important. That that's the ultimate thing. That's the reason why I said we got to know who we are, and we got to know that we're representing. Everybody's representing something. So every every action, every word that we say, all the things that we do, you know, it's all representing something. And um, I think the best thing that we can do is represent God and represent him well. Represent him well. Amen. 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 That's an awesome testimony. It's like, yeah, you did well, but I would love to hear from Christian, but you did so well just speaking on his behalf. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to pause and just see if anybody on the, on the uh, Zoom, if they have any comments or any questions for you. So I'm going to pause for just a few minutes because I have some comments. But if anybody has any questions or any comments about this testimony, it's, this is awesome. Um, know who you are and what you represent. That is so key. So key. And we can't stop. We cannot stop praying for our sons. You know, our daughters are special. And, and, and that's, a, you know, that's for another time. But we can't stop praying for them. I think about that six weeks that you got to spend with Christian. Um, that was awesome. And I know you probably enjoyed that time together. But then when you said, and then his dad spent some time with him, and that's when they got really close. It's like we, we each have a role. The very first person on this platform said, um, we are mothers. We can't be a dad. Mm -hmm. um, but just being in that position, knowing who you are, what you represent as far as his mother, just praying for him and just being right there for him. But it's an awesome testimony. So I'm going to pause if anybody has any comments. What? See, I hate to keep talking. So I was trying to pause and get someone a chance to say something. But when Maurice put in the in the chat, he said, uh, you're teaching. I was just thinking in my mind, um, you are an excellent teacher. You're an excellent teacher because you just uh, take your time. You make your point so clear. But that's what I was thinking in my mind. It was just so awesome. Monica, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was kind of thinking like you, Lori, when she, when she was saying him and his dad spent time. And everybody that know um, Pastor Bass know that he is a teacher. And I just, when, when she talked about Christian and him being this young man that it's just awesome how he's turning out, I, do, I was just thinking it has a lot to do with that father figure in his life. Yeah. But um, Sandra, hey, this, this is awesome teaching. I'm just enjoying it so much. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it was great. Great testimony. And I was just going to say, um, just throughout the whole process, the consistency that you and um, mm. Pastor Bass had, that is key. Being consistent throughout is the key. And it taught him, although you say he's not a talker, but it taught him how to be consistent through whatever he was going through. And I think that was awesome. Being consistent. And I'll say intentional. Man, intentional. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? 
when when you were saying, and it says that my internet is, is kind of shaky. And if you guys, if you guys can't hear me, let me know if I'm, if I'm freezing up. But when you were saying that uh, Christian had broken his femur, I was thinking, wasn't he a track star in college? That's what I was thinking. And um, so, yeah, God is awesome. It's, it just, it so reminded me, um, um, I know the plans I have for you. You mm-hmm. got to walk through the manure, but God has some plans for you that we just stick with him. And like you said, you know, you're representing him and you know, you want to please him. Um, yeah, we can't stop praying. Can't stop praying for our sons. Um, so thank you for that. Anybody yeah. else? For him to represent God all the way through college and just, you know, just to be that, like Tricia was saying, consistent, being consistent. And it's not going to be easy, right? Right. It's, it's, it's um, you, you got to put some work into it. Um, um, and you've got to know that um, every day is not going to, um, it's not going to be easy, but every day is not going to be hard either. I was going to ask you who's um uh, personality. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Hey, mom, it's Mel. Um, hey, Sandra. Um, hey, when you were talking about um, at the end, we're closer to the towards the end when you say things like um, "don't don't be messing up my name." Um, it kind of it kind of um, made me as a parent do a self reflection with my boys because, especially with Devin, just stopping there and not even doing the second saying the that not only um, are you representing the our household, but you're also representing God. And as a parent, I oftentimes, um, I, I need to make sure that I am um, enforcing and reminding my children that it's not just about, because um, you know with sports, name is always on the back of your jersey. It's not always about you um other people are watching you and um and you rep and what we represent as a household which is ultimately um salvation and jesus christ and the grace of god so thank you for that that is so true um i was gonna ask i was gonna ask whose personality did he have but he he said he's kind of low-key kind of like you and that's the meeting of strangers. Correct. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Correct. What What is his ministry? What does he do in the? How does he serve in the church? What is What does he do? Um, he is the um, youth church teacher. He works in the sound ministry as well. Amen. Amen. Awesome. 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 So maybe one day we'll have him here. Maybe one day we'll, we'll bring him back. <laughs> I'll bring him back. But thank you so much for taking the time and just um, to encourage, to encourage. And then that's what it's all about, that um, as mothers that we'll encourage and then any sons that we have on as well to just um, to be encouraged. As I always say, we, we don't just want our sons to be men of God, good husbands, good citizens. We just don't want, we need for them to be that. We need them to be that. So we won't stop praying and um, encouraging them as well. So if there's nothing else, anybody else? We'll ask you, if you don't mind, um, Cassandra, if you could close us in prayer. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for coming again. And thank you for your comments, um, even in the chat. And um, we'll close in prayer. Everybody ready? Okay. Dear God, I thank you for our sons. I thank you for our daughters. I yes. thank you for our children. Yes. That bring joy to us. I pray, Lord God, for the protection over their minds, yes. over their hearts, yes. and over their bodies. Shield them from all harm, trauma, and injury. Grant them spiritual discernment and an obedient heart. Keep their hearts pure and full of joy. 
When temptation comes, give them wisdom to make the right choices. Surround them with godly friends who love you. If there is anything coming against them, reveal it to us. Yes. We pray that no weapon formed against them will prosper. No, no. Bless them and keep them. Make your face to shine upon them yes. and give them peace. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much. Again, thank you all for, for joining. And I just pray sweet sleep for everybody. Good night. Thank you, thank you for the opportunity. Yes, Good thank night. you so much. Good night.